terms of who is or who is not actually having an MI, if they have chest pain, we're going to try to put a cap on it with CT versus EST in the assessment of patients with stable chest pain. And I'm with Dr. Peter McCavanaugh, a Young Investigator Award nominee. And the CAP trial, if you can, first off, just give me an idea of what the trial was designed for. It's for patients with stable chest pain who present to rapid access chest pain clinics, which are clinics that are very readily available within the UK. Um, people with all sorts of pains that I suppose general practitioners and other hospital doctors are concerned about the presence of angina. And these patients come generally to get a cardiology input and perform uh, an EST on the same day, an exercise ECG. Um, but traditionally, there's data to suggest that approximately a third of people will get an inconclusive result or be unable to perform a treadmill. And some studies within the UK suggest that these people actually have a higher rate of death compared to those who receive a diagnosis from treadmill. So the CAP study was really to try to compare the standard of care that is the exercise ECG to cardiac CT. Firstly, from a clinical point of view, we found that there was less symptoms of angina at the end of both three months and one year in the cardiac CT uh, cohort as measured through the Seattle Angina Questionnaire. We found that there was less rehospitalizations um, to the uh, in the ES or sorry in the CT arm compared to EST, and also that there was less um, infarctions and. Um, unstable angina in the uh, CT arm. Furthermore, we found that people in the CT arm had less secondary tests to reach diagnosis and indeed final management. And also the time for, uh, from referral to final management was also less within the CT arm. From a health economics point of view, we found that there was no difference in the cost between the two, two cohorts. In fact, there was actually a trend towards CT being cheaper and having a greater quality of life after the one year period, although it, it wasn't statistically significant. So the introduction of cardiac CT instead of the standard of care would cost the National Health Service in the UK no further cost. So what are you picking out when you're getting the CT? I suppose you're doing firstly a calcium score to see how much um, long-term calcification of the arteries there are and then you're doing a CT angio to look for significant stenosis. Um, I'm basically looking for those who have severe disease that may you know, benefit from intervention or more appropriate um, medical management. Um, and I suppose as well with the CT you're obviously able to pick up more incidental findings as well. So it does sound like more optimal therapy could be delivered once you know exactly what you're dealing with, which you can get with a CT. Very much so. Very much so. And I think what CT does, it shows you directly what's happening in the coronary arteries. And that allows clinicians to directly visualize what's happening and see which lesions have potential prognostic significance. And as such, you know, we'll bring the, the right patient more quickly to the cath lab and intervene if, if appropriate. So are you handling patients any differently now? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I suppose implementation of this in, in the UK obviously hasn't happened. There was NICE guidelines, which NICE is the body responsible for clinical excellence in the UK, Great. and it suggested that we should move away totally from treadmill, the exercise ECG, to stress imaging, cardiac CT, and, and direct invasive angiography. And in our institution, we're trying to be more driven towards the use of cardiac CT since, you know, we know that the economic value is... is is there, and I suppose that's always been something that, you know, in a private healthcare system, maybe it's not the same, but in a public healthcare system like, like the UK, we are, you know, very aware of what um, costs are behind um, different treatments, and we're trying to make it more economical. And I think this study has hopefully proven that there's at least no difference with clinical benefit. This is a good one, and if you want to read more about this particular paper, as well as a variety of other news items from the European Society of Cardiology meeting, Please join us at uh, Cardio Source World News. I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.